It is a very cold and windy and snowy day, but we are finally spending an entire week with the big boy Bronco. We've got a two-door wild track model here. We'll be spending the next week living with it and seeing what it's like. I have a lot of Ford at home right now. We've got the Bronco, obviously, my 350R, the GT350, and then the Bronco. It looks really, I don't like silver normally, but it actually looks pretty good on this. Two-door model. The new DRLs out front, the big Bronco lettering. A lot of people seem to think the Bronco Sport when it first came out was the Bronco. But no, this is the actual proper Bronco. Quick glimpse at the interior of the Bronco. This one is the automatic transmission with the 2.7. You can still get a manual on the big boy Bronco. There are some stipulations. We have a digital cluster here with an analog speedometer on the left side, but this digital screen, it has a good amount of information on there and I, I, I like it. It took a little bit to understand and read it though, because I had to search a little bit for the range because it didn't pop to my eye immediately. Fuel economy was clear, speed was clear in the lane keeping, um, but it, it's, it's pretty nice. A nice grab handle right here too. And then the center upgraded screen is very nice, it's huge, but it feels well integrated because it's like the same height as this entire center console panel here. It's not like somebody just left an iPad stuck on there. So I do like that quite a bit. And we do have heated seats and heated steering wheel, which is nice because it is 15 degrees Fahrenheit outside. That's, that's very cold, it's very cold. Uh, locking diffs there, traction control off and hazards. Ooh, these are nice to push. Also the steering wheel buttons are, um, they look like they will like toggle, but they actually like push in. They're like, you see they're like squishy. I have a pretty cool opportunity to almost directly compare this Bronco to the Jeep Wrangler, arguably the biggest competitor for the Bronco. Whoa, there are multiple people off the road. I guess it was too slippery for some people. Okay. Last week, I was driving a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xe, which is the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid version of the Wrangler. And it's a four-door, a little bit different, also way higher price point. That thing stickered for almost $70,000. This one, I believe, is just over $53,000 as configured. I will look at the window sticker later. Um, but they're two off-road oriented vehicles that have a lot of tech and some of the latest uh, features in them. The doors and the roof come off. So it'd be really cool for me to see the difference and how they stack up. Uh, from the initial get-go, for some reason, the regular Rubicon was not optioned with heated seats or heated steering wheel. So I was really, really cold. This one already has heated seats and heated steering wheel. So I'm happy. It's, it's the simple things. It's a simple thing sometimes. I did not realize we were supposed to get more snow. We just came out of the office, remote started the Bronco. I actually really like the proportions of the two-door. Just, it looks cool, especially the bigger, bigger tires. The silver and black contrast, not bad. Quick little walk around. So the DRLs and the taillights do turn on when this remote started. The big boy Bronco does look really badass. Those DRLs, the circle, the line going across that connects into with the Bronco lettering. I don't even know the technical term of these little design features, but they're really cool because when you're driving it, they kind of mark the outer edges of where the hood is. Helps with that. Really short overhangs too. Front and rear. This thing has a lot of presence. It's pretty tall, pretty big, a big box still, but I, I think it looks really cool two-door. We have the side wild track with the Sasquatch, and you have a little Bigfoot Sasquatch there. Sasquatch package. I'm gonna take a couple pictures and we'll hop in and uh, head out. I'm gonna make a stop at Costco to grab some groceries. Truck is uh, remote start mode. So when you open it up too, got this video in the middle and it forms the Bronco horse that's pretty cool and then it fades to a blue background I'm going to go ahead and put this into four-wheel drive so you just press that four by four shift in progress and then if we rotate the outer ring this dial here we can change our drive modes and the whole digital screen changes so we have normal we have a, let's see, which way do I go? Eco mode. We have a sport mode. We have slippery, mud and ruts, sand, Baja. Oh, Baja mode. Wait, what's it doing? No, stop shifting. And, 
I think that's the other end. Oh, so it doesn't, you don't get to keep cycling around. See, I'm still turning it. So we put into four high for Baja. If we go back the other way, I'm gonna drive in normal. I think it should be fine. Ooh, sports got like a lava rock type of thing to it. It's some pretty cool animations. Normal mode. I just found this. So we've got the entire headlight control panel and then the little side view mirror. Wait, wait Matt, these are called zone lighting? It's called zone lighting. It should be in the center console too. That's so cool. It's like bright as heck in the corner on both the mirrors. I don't know, I just found that and thought it was really cool. We've got, Matt said there's a lot of Bronco Easter eggs, so I gotta look for some of those. We've got a little Bronco logo on the screen there. This center cluster screen is definitely a little busy. It took me a bit to get used to it to find where all the information was. Like, for some reason, range. I just didn't see that little number in the corner at first and the fuel level. But once you get used to it, it's very nice. And the right one is your, um, Configure my view, so we have all of these, so I'm not the bottom one, but if you go up through the screens, you can change uh, what is being displayed. Gauges for, what was that, for temperatures and things like that. Uh, and then we've got tire pressure. We've got power distribution, so, wait, I'm in park right now, so that wouldn't do anything. And on the center screen, we've got this similar my view thing. We can show fuel economy, your off-road status, and then, you can see Matt's phone call pulled up here. We have wireless Apple CarPlay. So I just paired my phone and wirelessly we've got CarPlay. It's fantastic. Also, you note the side view mirrors are mounted not on the door, which means when you take the doors off, the side view mirrors remain, which is opposite of the Wrangler. The Wrangler, you take the doors off and you no longer have mirrors anymore. Uh, Matt's also saying if you, I keep talking about you, but you're no longer there on the screen. There we go. Here's your representation of Matt. <laughs> when you take the doors off, they fit in here. We can fold the, fold the windows down. You roll the windows down. They are uh, frameless. Where's the window switch? Here we go. See? It's in the center. Yeah, yeah. frameless windows, which means you can put this window all the way down. And then both the doors could just go into the back. Why did I open the window? It's 10 degrees outside. It's freezing. Well, that's your problem. Uh, pitch and roll. But I the cool part, too, is, is that you can option uh, bags for the doors so that the doors will actually hang on the inside and the rear. I think so. It's actually it's a really cool concept, the way that they did it, so that when you're bouncing through the trails, yeah. the doors don't get damaged. I think I think that bag is in the, the back and then the bed. Yep. This also has lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. So you see the little overhead view of the Bronco there. The little brackets on the left and right would be green when you're in the lane. I'm just sitting in my driveway, so they're nothing. Um, or orange or red, or that turns off. And then we also have adaptive cruise control, which I've tried out. It's pretty good. Fuel economy has been decent. I mean, this is a Sasquatch package with the 2.7 liter. So, and it has like Matt and I were saying earlier, the aerodynamic properties of a brick and with a big 35 inch tires, I'm averaging 17.6. I think a factor is also the freezing cold, um, but it's, it's, it's good enough. It's what you expect out of something like this. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, Matt, I'm gonna go inside because I'm hungry having eaten dinner. I will talk to you later. Sounds good. Right. Talk to you later. Have a good weekend, dude. I'll call you. It's a very cold Saturday, and we're spending the whole day with the Bronco, running some errands, actually heading down to go check out a model home. I am contemplating building a house with a bigger garage because currently I have a two-car garage, and as you see, many cars end up living outside. Uh, regardless, we'll be driving the Bronco for quite a bit. I think there's a little chunk of freeway, too, because I haven't really taken that on the freeway to see how the tire noises, the wind noises, how it handles driving at higher speeds. I did do a road trip in the Wrangler Rubicon to Michigan, so that's about a 300-mile drive, and uh, I did didn't really enjoy it on the freeway. So we'll see how the Bronco compares, especially with the Sasquatch package and the 35 inch uh, tires, which are um, definitely not the most on-road oriented, but it's been good so far. The Wild Track is the top tier trim and we have the Sasquatch package as standard, which brings the high clearance fender, suspension, the bigger uh, wheels and tires. These are 17 inch beadlock capable wheels with the 35s. Yeah, I got really salty. I'll have to wash this before I film it tomorrow. But uh, off we go. The two door also has really long doors. So if you do four door, the front doors get shorter. Also have the numeric keypad here to get in. Fixed step right here. And in we go. Obviously, we have to take the Bronco through a Starbucks drive through as a test. It is going to succeed. That Range Rover has a Mustang logo on the back. You see that, Alex? Yes, I do. Interesting. You'll note the Bronco 
doesn't like have any Ford logos anywhere. We've got this version of the, the Bronco horse. It's cold. There's one here. We got one there. Yeah, another Bronco there. A lettering there, but I don't see many Ford logos anywhere. We also have, is that the VIN? Designed and engineered, no, no VIN. Designed and engineered Ford in Dearborn, Michigan, USA, built at Michigan Assembly Plant. Oh, there's a wireless charger down there. I was wondering where that was. There's so much more space in this. Like, there's a cup holder, two. There's a little wireless charging pad, and you can put things in there. Uh, we have a center console that's bigger than a post-it stamp. It's like useful. The grab handle for when Alex gets nervous. Um, <laughs> give me the Bronco the full 93 premium so we get the 330 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. The 2.7 EcoBoost V6. It ice rained last night, so the Bronco is covered in ice. It was like, look, it's just coated in like a sheet of ice back here. It's melting a little bit, uh, and this is all black ice behind it, so I almost fell opening the tailgate to load up some camera gear. And the Bronco is very salty and dirty, so we're gonna have to wash it. I'm gonna run it through a car wash. I hope it fits. With the Sasquatch pack, it's tall. Um, and I, I hope it fits through a regular car wash. And then uh, we'll be doing the review today, filming a B-roll, and we're also meeting up with Tim Bro Photography to shoot some photos later. People have asked for more Tim on the channel, so uh, we'll be providing more hilarious Tim commentary, and he wants to get some pictures. But off we go. Whoa, that's slippery. Winter sucks. Going in salty and dirty and should be coming out clean, hopefully. I wouldn't normally take any car through a drive through car wash like this that's contact, but this Bronco is a press car, obviously, and I assure you they're through worse things. At Ford, uh, they go through contact car washes, so I, I, there are people who have commented before and like, what are you doing to the paint? It'll be okay. It'll be okay. I just need it clean so it looks good on video. It fits with the Sasquatch package. Those 35 inch tires, it's going through, and height clearance is fine. All right, that's good to know. seven and 415 pound feet of torque. This thing is pretty quick. It gets up and goes. It's actually two door with a 10 speed auto. You can hear the wind noise is still pretty bad, but just, I mean, it's because it has the aerodynamic properties of a brick. So it's to be expected. And also the road presence. It just, it feels very wide. I'm pretty tall up. I like it. I just stood outside for 15 minutes filming my intro on the Bronco Review and I think my I can't feel my ears. Oh my god, it's so cold outside. 18 degrees with wind chill. Uh, but talking about this thing, I need to get like a warehouse or something. We just parked it out here. The cameras don't like the cold either. The battery life is like dying. It went from like 75% to dead in 15 minutes, which I know Sony's eat batteries, but that's, that's a record. Good thing I've got six in the back. Um, all the thoughts on the Bronco. Now that I just did the intro, I have a lot of thoughts in my mind. So we have the 2.7 liter in this. It makes 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. There is a base 2.3 liter that brings 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. With the Wild Track, the top tier trim, you have to get the 2.7. You cannot get the base 2.3 liter. And also, uh, with the 2.7, you are forced to get the 10-speed automatic. The manual is only available with the base 2.3 liter. They're all 4 by for a standard, there are six different trims. The base, the Big Bend, the uh, Black Diamond, the Outer Banks, the Badlands, and the Wild Track. There's a lot of different trims. I think I got all of those right. This one's got the kind of cloth seats, which has a cool pattern on it. And then I just noticed they got a Bronco horse on there too. So it's pretty nice. The doors obviously come off, so there's nothing on them beyond the lock, unlock, a handle. And then there's a little storage in that here too. But this is so much more storage than the Jeep. Like I've got a coffee here. I can put my phone in another cup holder. There's a wireless charging pad. If I don't want to charge stuff, I can put things in it like sunglasses. The center console is decent size too. So I like that. Here's the window sticker for this Bronco. It says not for sale. I presume this is a pre-production or really early media vehicle. So it's a wild track, two door, one of some options. We've got the uh, upgraded 12 inch sync screen there, the Lux package, 360 camera, B&O sound system. Uh, we also have 
a couple other things like the hard top, the molded hard top. So not for sale, no pricing or fuel efficiency data there, but we do get this little like cheat sheet from Ford. Iconic silver, cloth sandstone slash black seats. So base price, it says 46,980. I think that's without destination, but uh, wild track, some of the options are on here for a total as option price of 53,650. Not for sale, just for comparison purposes, but this is about what a production one option this way would be. Just over 53,650. To me, that's actually a pretty good price. That Jeep Wrangler I had was 70 grand. I've had Rubicon Eco Diesels over 70 grand. This, I think is pretty awesome for 50 something thousand dollars. Can you option it higher? Absolutely. Um, there are some more things you can throw on it. And then there's the problem with markup. I'm gonna talk about it in the review, but I see Broncos going for anywhere between 10 to $40,000 over sticker. There are first editions trading for almost six figures, which to me is crazy, but that's the market we are in. In a regular, regular market, 50 grand I think is a pretty awesome uh, price for something like this because I think the technology is a lot better than the Jeep. The materials, I heard a lot of people complain about them. I don't mind it in this. Are there quality concerns? Yes. When the Bronco first came out, the launch was very rough. A lot of top issues, quality problems that I'm sure they'll iron out as they go through that. So that is disappointing to find out. This one's been okay. This one's been okay to me. Like the door hasn't fallen off, which is always a good sign. Um, but I think I, I like this. I'm also, again, a bit of a Ford person. I've had a couple Mustangs currently have a 350R Shelby. Um, but at the same time, I also had a Ram, so I guess I'm also a sort of a Stellantis person. Anyways, I'm gonna get back to filming a review now because I've warmed up sufficiently, but it was good to just have a little more conversation on the Bronco. Check this out. I think this qualifies as an Easter egg. The shape of this start button with the little extension there, that's the match the DRL's up front. I mean, this has no purpose functionally, so it absolutely has to be like a styling cue. That's pretty cool. Forget the Bronco, Andy, what are you wearing? You got a ramen sponsorship? Yeah. Beef flavor. Beef flavor. Yeah, that's, that's worth that. fantastic. Absolutely. Tim, bro. Hey. Happy on. Happy New Year. Hang on. Hang on. What? What are you What are you getting? Merchandise. You have merchandise now? Happy New Year. I do. Chrysler Year, merchandise. It's a Chrysler oh, hat. <laughs> Mopar or no car? That's not. That's Mopar, like. Hey, Mopar leaves you with no car. That, <laughs> dude, that's like so out of date. It should be a Stellantis hat now. I know. Chrysler only makes the Pacifica. I know they really should be dead. They don't really make any. <laughs> they only like make products the Pacifica anymore. now. There's nothing else. Well, they technically make the 300 still, but that's but probably gonna be canceled in like a year. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Where are we going? We're we going over there to shoot photos. Yep. What if this gets stuck? It's not gonna get stuck. No, it won't get stuck. We'll put it into what mode? Normal? Nah, that's fine. All right. You wanna hop in? Uh, yeah, preferably. No, nah, you can walk. See you guys. <laughs> This is nice. There's a lot of headroom back here. Like. Yeah, just because you're short tip. Four, hey. <laughs> four people in a Bronco. Shooter Bronco, the seat just slides out like this. And then you get a Timbro in the back. Ow. Uh, sorry. That's and then, uh, oh. This thing's quiet. Is it on? I think it is on. It is, ah. yeah. Wow, this is an EV? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Jesus. It has. It says go over any type of terrain. We <laughs> went over it. <laughs> we just confirmed that the Bronco can do some four-wheel donuts, and Tim got some pretty awesome action shots. That wraps up my week with the Bronco. Takeaways are, I really like it. Two doors, the way to go. Wild track with the Sasquatch pack is how I would option it. And I do like it more than the Wrangler. I definitely will try to get some more time with probably a four door or another two door when it's warm out so I can take the roof off, uh, take the doors off and experience that. And I am absolutely very excited for a Bronco Raptor when they do bring that to market. If they do bring that to market with a bit more power, even more capability. Holy crap, I've been talking to the camera for these couple of seconds and I can't feel my face so with that we'll end this vlog make sure you check out the full review too and whenever Tim gets the photos done he'll post it on his profile and I will definitely post them on Instagram and social media thanks for watching